welcome. My name is Andrew Smith and for the last 35 odd years I've travelled the world collecting tarantula spiders. Now during that time I've written numerous scientific papers, published a number of tarantula books and as well have described over 50 new species of tarantulas that are new to science. Uh, some that you'll be familiar with are Postlotheria hanovilla sumica, Postlotheria tigrina wesley, and of course Brachyperma bungartani. Now, I also make tarantula documentaries. Uh, 30 odd years ago, I made one of the very first ever made, which was Desert Tarantulas. Uh, and if you want to see what I'm doing today, well, visit Love Tarantulas YouTube. Now, before Christmas last year, we were out in India making a brand new documentary about Postlotheria metallica. That's right, the breathtaking blue pokey. Uh, it's a spider that is very, very dear to my heart. Why? Because 20 odd years ago, I rediscovered it after 120 odd years. Now, I would have to admit to you that books rock my boat considerably more than internet blogs. This is Reginald Percock's Fauna of India, published in 1900. It contains descriptions, the first descriptions actually, of many of the Postlotheria tarantula spiders that you guys adore. I'm a creature of the past, which is one of the reasons why I suspect these cards rock my boat. Now, Danny Damon sent to me Keeper's Cards. They remind me of Brook Bond's tea cards when I was a little boy. Although they are considerably higher quality, mind you, they're laminated. Quite spectacular, really. Now, Brookbond's tea cards used to come with every packet of tea when I was a little lad, and one collected them. They came in series, sets that you stuck in a book. They would be the birds of Asia, the mammals of North America, the butterflies of Britain and Europe. And I must admit, I collected them with zealous enthusiasm, and I suspect that many of you guys will be doing the same with these cards. Oh, there's even one on me. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> now, what I've done is I've taken a handful of cards. I'm going to discuss them. I'm just going to peruse the card and see what memories the card stirs up in my mind. Uh, on field collecting trips, making documentaries, making, writing even scientific papers. I mean, for instance, Postlotheria rufolata. I have fond memories of collecting this tarantula 20 odd years ago in India with my dear old friend Paul Carpenter who is one of the best tarantula field workers in the world by the way and you'll notice I pop an image here I'm sporting a magnificent beard now you're thinking why on earth have you got that right around your face well the reason was I intended to collect a whole load of Indian tarantula folklore which meant, of course, interviewing Adivasi tribal chieftains, elders of villages. And many of these fellows sport a magnificent beard themselves. So, being a somewhat elderly gentleman, uh, sporting such a beard meant that doors were opened, so to speak. And we did actually collect some wonderful folklore, which I should be using one day in a documentary. So... Let's have a look at these cards, shall we? Let's explore a handful of Danny Damon's Keeper's Cards. Let's see what memories they stir up. Now, as an aside, all of the video clips or images that are going to appear in this space will have been filmed over the years either on my field expeditions or Paul Carpenter's. More recent video clips will have been done by lovetranchulas.com, my video production platform, and they are mostly filmed by my DOP, Guy Tansley. So, let's kick off then. First card, Historicates Hercules. A veritable beast and one of the very biggest baboon spiders that have ever been found. Now, it is the spider that many of you dream of owning if you're interested in baboon spiders, but in truth, none of you have actually got one. 
Now I know that on the internet people boast of having Hercules, but it has never actually been full collected. What you have were either Latticeps or Gigas, which come from the Cameroons and possibly drift into southern Nigeria. So, this by the way is for me a spider that I intend to fill collect. A long, long while ago, when I was a kid, probably about 17, or certainly before I went to university, I went through Nigeria in a Land Rover with a friend of my father's called Tony Key, and we uh, actually reached Jebba. Ironically, I wasn't working or interested in trenches at that time, I had no idea I was that close to the type location of this spider. It was collected by Lieutenant Aberdeen 120 odd years ago, and it is a wonderful adventure of colonial and imperial history. I intend to make a documentary about this very spider, but it's going to involve going up the uh, river, river Niger and up to Jebba, and it is a dangerous area. Postleferia metallica, another iconic tarantula spider that you dream of having. As I said earlier, this is one that's dear to my heart, as now 20 years ago I first came across it, in fact I was the first white European to set eyes on this spider in 120 odd years. Of course, all the local Adavazi tribal peoples up in the hills all around the type area know it intimately, but for me, well, it was an astonishing moment when I first tickled that spider out of its hole. I can remember literally that flash of blue legs and I, my heart was thumping so fiercely I had to actually sit down on the ground and catch my breath. And I, uh, there's an image popping up. I took a photograph of that spider and I can't believe I managed to pull it off. We didn't have digital SLRs cameras in those days. We had old fashioned film stock SLRs which means I held the camera in one hand and tickled the spider and then and just literally shot off a whole load of film. Which of course I had no idea if any of the images were going to come out until I got back to the UK and popped the roll of film into boots. It was just so gloriously primitive in those days. But again a wonderful spider, now quite common as it's captive bred and very easily captive bred. So there's numerous, numerous spiderlings and juveniles available. Um, we did think it was seriously endangered, and I must admit, I was at the type site just before Christmas, and um, last year, and I was appalled by how the forested hillsides had been denuded since I last was at that, that location 20 years, years ago. And unfortunately the trees have failed to be turned into charcoal for the uh, brickworks nearby. But, lucky for us, we discovered this spider 300 mile, mile, miles further south than the type site. Which means it is considerably more common than we first thought along the Eastern Ghats. So, not as endangered we first thought. And an iconic spider. Postleferia. Metallica. Theraphosa blondi is indeed a beast and the footage that is now playing uh, is footage that we filmed in Suriname. Now, the majority of material in the trade, in the hobby, essentially comes from French Guyana and it was raised when we were filming our material in Suriname that it does actually seem to be, be a little bit different. It seems, as Guy Tansley has pointed out in the past, a tad more hairy. So when DNA research is done on this material, there's a possibility that the material we were filming in Suriname is not the same spider as in French Guyana. Who knows? But it's very, very closely related, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if it's just a more hairy version. Uh, what we noted when we were in the field filming these spiders was quite fascinating, and that is it appears to be nomadic. It is a bit of a beast. At night time it emerges from its lair and heads out across the forest floor in search of essentially rodents, 
that's what it's feeding on. But there's lots of big beetles out there and uh, big cockroaches as well. I've always suspected those really itchy, urticating hairs are not just for defensive purposes, but for also taking over rodent burrows. In other words, it moves into a burrow, blitzes the burrow with urticating hairs and simply takes it over. It doesn't dig its own burrow. It's quite capable of doing so, and maybe even extend rodent burrows, but essentially it takes them over. It blitz them with urticating hairs, the rodents depart, and then it uses that series of burrows for its lair, let's say for three or four weeks, and then simply moves on and takes over another set of burrows. It is indeed again another iconic spider and it's been around in Europe for a fair old time. It was described by Pierre Latriel in uh, 1804 and what is intriguing is that Latriel only <laughs> escaped the guillotine during the French Revolution by the skin of his teeth. Uh, it's a spider that is in every museum collection and there probably are more documentaries made about it for television than any other tarantula spider in existence. Nevertheless, uh, many people dream of owning it. Problem are you can become sensitised very easily. These are urticating hairs that do not take prisoners. You have to be very, very careful if you're keeping these spiders. Uh, too much contact with those urticating hairs means you can become sensitised. And then you will know all about it, to put it bluntly. Let's push on. Next card. Ah, Heteroscodra maculata. Again, a breathtakingly beautiful spider. Uh, the images that are appearing here were taken in Ghana. This is a project that I did a reconnaissance, probably about a decade ago now, because the spider, uh, it and Schmatopel macassiatum are linked to the slave trade. But we have in the museum collections quite a few tarantula spiders collected very early on. You're talking about the, from the 1750s in Ghana and of course the Caribbean. And this material would have eventually found its way into the very early museum collections. So in other words, it's a great historical documentary to be made. I did a reconnaissance in Ghana with my team at that time and um, many of the Im images again would have been taken by Tansley and it's a project we will go back and one day film again. Phonotopus cancerides. This was my very very first tarantula spider. Right. I was a young science teacher working in South East London and we were doing a big project on arthropods and uh, um, we had the usual collection of stick insects etc in the school lab and one of my kids came up and said uh, sir there's a tarantula in the pet shop down the road so lunchtime i popped from the back of my motorbike and we drove for a mile or so and arrived at the pet shop and to my astonishment there was the tarantula which was cancerides i purchased it for the school lab and uh, I think it lasted about two weeks and then promptly died. And to my astonishment, I discovered that virtually nobody knew anything about tarantula spiders at that time. There were no books other than some really poor ones from America. And I concluded that there was this whole sphere open for a young science teacher to study. So, my very first spider, Cancerides. Uh, they have a very, very long lifespan. Um, I, I'll show you an image here. It was over 25 years old when she popped her clogs. Cirripagopus lividus. Or, I think I described it originally as Haplopelma lividum. Um, this is my very first tarantula spider. It was my first scientific paper. It is a wonderful cobalt blue tarantula with a bit of an attitude problem. Uh, the name Cirripagopus is a bit of a Groundhog Day situation in taxonomy at the moment in that it needs revising and probably will be returned back to the genus Haplopelma or into another genus called Melopius. But again, we're waiting for the taxonomy to catch up, so to speak. 
Um, the name Sibigopus is because there are problems with the group and it is an old um, uh, revision done by Robert Raven, I think in 1985, which is the reason why we're stuck with this name Sibigopus. So, nevertheless, though, my very first trench to spider that I described in a scientific paper. <laughs> right. Let's push on. Brachypelma auratum, described by my dear old friend, the late Dr. Gunter Schmidt. Uh, he beat me to this spider by a couple of months. Um, the paper that I wrote was going to describe it as Brachypelma flamus, and uh, um, unfortunately, my paper was delayed and uh, um, Gunter's came out before mine and thus had the priority. The footage that you're seeing being screened at the side here was uh, comes from our Brachypelma documentaries. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spider. Uh, the footage will have been filmed again by Guy Tansley. And we actually went back to see if we could find a spider that I located a good decade beforehand. And to our astonishment, it looked like the same spider set down the same burrow. How about that? But as you can see, a very attractive spider indeed. One of the most beautiful of all the Brachypelmas. Ah, says Jairus Darling Guy, I have wonderful memories of this spider. Uh, there'll be a series of images popping up at the side there. It was one of my very first field trips. We're talking, oh, must be at least 30 years ago. To South Africa, and I was with uh, Vincent Hull Williams, a good old friend of that period. We went on a number of field expeditions together collecting tarantulas, and it was with Dr. Martin Filmer, the late Dr. Martin Filmer, who was the chairman of the South African Spider Club during that period of time. Oh, uh, I can remember searching for this spider uh, with Cous Duet, and uh, um, it, you literally are talking about scrub grassland and uh, there will be a clump of, of, of grass and the burrow will be heavily silk lined and, and then going deep into the ground. Uh, the images of course are poor, we're talking about um, sim film SLR cameras in those days, but a spider, as I said, it brings about immense fond memories of a wonderful field trip. <laughs> Ternochilus murinus, and now I can pronounce Ternochilus or Ternoculus, your, cho your choice. Why have I chosen this card? Because this spider is featuring in our brand new documentary. Pelinobius muticus, the king baboon spider, and the man-eating lions of Savo, which is all about imperial adventure in East Africa and the building of what was called the lunatic lion. As this lunatic lion was being built, all sorts of tarantula spiders were being found. I really enjoyed myself with these cards. They brought back all sorts of memories and an adventure, etc. Uh, I very much like those Brook Bond tea cards all those years ago when I was a small boy. And I, I would be looking at these little cards and thinking, one day I'm going to be out there in the field looking at this butterfly, looking at this bird. Well, for me, it turned out to be tarantula spiders. So, Danny Damon, I love your keeper's cards. I love them. And hopefully, right, they're going to be a great success and there's going to be oodles more of them coming out, which people can collect. You can spend happy hours just flicking through them, admiring the spiders. And I believe some people have suggested sticking them on the side of your tank, etc. This is a kind of trigger for information. So, recommended. Enjoy. <laughs>